Why Sadhguru is so amazing? He's so amazing for three reasons, and I'm going to list them out here for you today. The first reason he's amazing is because he is a mastery, he has mastery over the five elements, and mastery over the seven chakras. That all encompasses into one. What does this mean? Well, he has complete competence over his own energy system. I don't know this for sure, because I've only heard Sadhguru say this, and I can't verify this. I'm not going to look through a microscope into his body or mind and figure out if this is true, but he said it. And I can conclude that yes, I believe that's the case. Anyways, moving on to number two. The reason why he's in, uh, so amazing is because I saw him in person in 2019, which is one of the greatest mistakes of my life because it led me to this path that I can never, can no longer turn away from. I'm saying mistake kind of uh, smilingly because it was a great blessing, the greatest blessing of my life maybe, seeing that man in person. And I saw that he is no doubt enlightened. I saw it from his body, his maintenance center, Manipurika Chakra, was shining like a diamond light. And it's the first enlightened person I saw. Amazing. Third reason why he's so amazing is because all the work that he has done and he's continuing to do. Case in point, the creation and consecration of the Dhyana Linga. This is what it is. This is why Sadhguru is so amazing. If you're wondering what this is, stay tuned for this video and I will explain to you exactly all of these three points and why they mean so much to you. First and foremost, who am I? Well, I'm just some guy. I'm a white male, born in Ukraine, living in Canada, Toronto, Canada, and feeling good about life, enjoying life. I get to put on this costume every day and talk to the camera and share my spiritual ideas. Whether you think they're valid or not valid, you have the comment section down below. Critique me, comment uh, on me, ask me questions. I'm here and I'm open to you and for you all. Who is Sadhguru? Well, that's the man that you see hanging above my wall over there. Some of you, some people may think that it's weird for a person to hang up some man up a wall. Well, I would also agree. I wouldn't hang some athlete on my wall if unless I was in that kind of world. If, if I was an athlete and I saw an athlete much, many more levels above me, I would hang a picture of uh, him on my wall because it's the qualities that I'm looking into. That's the qualities that I want and admire. And seeing a picture inspires me. So this is no different from me taking a picture of a mountain and hanging a picture of a mountain on my wall because that gives me inspiration. Similarly to this man. It's not because I like how he looks, yes? Never mind. That, that was my brother knocking. Uh, not because I like how he looks, so I have some, uh, you know, I like Sadhguru. I like him a lot, but not in that way. So Sadhguru is a wise sage and master. He's 67 years old, I believe, and he lives in India. He's Indian born. Sadhguru isn't his name. Sadhguru is a title that he gave himself. You know, a title like to exclaim something. Yes, you call me this. That's not his name. That's not the name that his parents gave him. The name that his parents gave him was Jaggi Vasudev. And that's who, he's, who he is. But uh, Sadhguru, maybe you can say, is a stage name. And he gave him this, he gave himself this name where he chose this uh, title for himself to eradicate your skepticism about him. Basically, he's saying who he is. Yes, I'm a Sadhguru. And that means something. What does that mean? Well, it means you've gone beyond all concepts and you're a teacher from within. That's what it means to me. So that's who he is. Let's start talking about the three points, working away from the last one to the first one. How about that this time? So the last point, number three, is that he consecrated the Dhyana Linga and he did many more things. Like he created this 112 foot statue in India, which uh, stands there and also glory. And I have a smaller representation here, a one foot sized Adiyogi statue that reverberates and inside of this statue is a little machine, energetic machine. So it makes this being alive. 
it's not the best that I'm sitting so close to him. If I was sitting a little bit farther away and didn't have anything on him, his energy would uh, grow much more, but it's all going into me and I'm making use of it. So I guess it's good. What has Sadhguru done? Sadhguru has fed millions of people. Sadhguru has planted many more millions of trees. Sadhguru offers free health care to the rural people of India, where he lives. Sadhguru has spoken on numerous prestigious platforms, such as the World Health Organization, I'm sorry, the World Economic Forum, um, and other prestigious uh, platforms such as those. Maybe you're thinking, oh, that sounds like some nefarious activity is going on in there. Those organizations aren't favorable. And at first I thought, why is he there? What is he doing there? But then I recognized that this man only wants more human beings to speak to. And it doesn't matter where he goes or why he goes there. The primary, well, it matters why he goes it. He goes there to reach a larger audience. I doubt that he has some secret plan or he's working with some secret people. That's, that would be a shocker to me. Wow, that's amazing but I highly doubt it. So he has done all of these things and he's regarded as India's 50th most influential people, which considering the country has a 1 billion population, that's pretty good. He's also been received by the president and the vice president and many high ranking officials in India and also the rest of the world while he was running his campaign for Save Soil he met many parliament leaders all across the globe to push this initiative to save our soil. Soil is becoming depleted due to farming practices, incorrect farming practices, and he's looking to change that. But my friends, that's not the most significant thing that he's done. Even though he has reached a billion people, that's very worthwhile. It's an insignificant proportion to the energy that those human beings received and the benefits that they've gained, even though food is very good. What's better than food? Spirituality and spiritual food. And this, my friends, is the ultimate machine. It's like the ultimate machine. You can make a, mach a driving machine. In fact, I'm looking out the window, there's a driving machine. I'm recording this on my camera and it's a recording machine and it has some useful and func some useful functions. But this is the ultimate machine. This encompasses everything that has to do with human well-being. Oh, you might ask, can it drive for me? Can it record a video for me? No, nothing that small. I'm saying small because driving is a small task. You get from point A to point B. It's not a small task if you don't have a car, then getting from point A to baby, point B is very difficult and challenging. But you know what's more challenging? Suffering in your mind. That's much more challenging than going from point A to point B or not being able to record videos. And this, my friends, is the ultimate machine to relieve human suffering. This Sadhguru created, he consecrated it. What does this mean? Well, this outer form is granite, as far as I'm told. And inside, there's a small hole in the top and there's a hole down through the tube. And Sadhguru placed a... I'm assuming a copper mm, rod that also was covered with solidified mercury, seven little points to symbolize the seven chakras. I'm assuming, I hope I'm getting this correct. And that lingam inside serves as a spine to this entire structure. And as it sits there, it reverberates very nicely. It's been uh, set in place. And the granite also serves to strengthen that because the density of granite and the density of this rock holds the energy very well. But my friends, Sadhguru has said, Sadhguru has I don't want to talk from memory and things that I've learned logically. I want to share my personal experience. This is 
that's enough talking about the Dhyanalinga. I cannot say any more without it just being conjecture. Let's go to the second point, my friends, is that uh, in 2019, I have seen Sadhguru in person. 2019 on November 4th was the first day that I saw this glorious man. I believe it's November 4th. Maybe it was November 24th, some day along these lines, but it was a Saturday. And I was sitting on uh, my chair and my seat uh, in the Toronto city big place where lots of things happen and it can hold thousands of people, maybe 10,000 people or more. The Convention Center, that's what it's called, the Toronto Convention Center, T TCC. I believe I'm getting that correct. And I'm sitting in all the way on the right side, far away from the stage, and they're playing Sounds of Isha music, and I'm getting relaxed. I'm getting very woozy and kind of almost going in a trance. And I'm just closing my eyes and decided that I'm going to meditate. And then something just nudges me on the shoulder. I look to my left, I look towards the stage, and there is this great man walking on stage. The energy was shifted to my forehead, to my third eye. It was this just like that. And this gave me the chance to perceive him non-physically, to perceive this man not for what he is in his body, but something much larger than that. And as his body was walking, it was just a body, no ordinary, ordinary as everyone else. He wasn't dressed ordinarily, he was dressed like a sage. Sagely he was dressed. And I saw his energy, we could say I saw his spirit. That's not really correct, but we'll go along with the common terminology. And all of his nadis I saw were totally purified and a light was shining from his Manipuraka chakra, his maintenance center. The light that was shining through I saw it wasn't his light. It wasn't like he's, I'm going to bring light into my stomach and I'm going to shine this through. It was like, you remove the clouds from the sky and there you go, there's sunlight. You don't have to do anything for sunlight. Sunlight is already there, but clouds. Or maybe there's a block in your window. You remove the block, ah, sunlight. Just the same way, exactly the same way Sadhguru was. That's how I saw him. He has removed 100% of his impurities, all of his impurities were gone, totally gone, totally eradicated, dissolved. And all that remained was the light shining from the universe, the universal light, the spiritual light, God. Those are the words that I can claim, but it was just diamond light. It was the most pure light that I could see. Before I saw him, I would gather a lot of information from Sadhguru, listening to his videos and him talking about the Nadis. Oh, there's a 72,000 nadis and they flow through the body and they're connecting to the chakras and they, they're a pathway of energy. And that's the first time that I saw that this is a reality and he's totally purified. And I also saw a complete balance between his left side and his right side. 100% balanced human being. Balanced in his masculine, balanced in his feminine energy and his masculine energy. I've never seen anything so symmetrical in my life, so perfectly balanced. It's the most balanced thing maybe I've ever seen in my life. You can balance things physically, but to get perfect geometry of an object is basically or virtually impossible unless you've spiritually realized and attained some things spiritually within yourself. Which that's what I saw. Also, I saw the quality of his... Okay, that's uh, I'm not going to get into that. That's a little bit off topic. Maybe next time. So that's pretty much it. That's the first day that I realized Sadhguru was enlightened. This is an enlightened man. And from that day forward, I had 100% trust and faith in this man. You say, oh, you say you don't believe, don't have faith. Well, I'm going to change my words here a little bit. I don't know anything really about spirituality or life anything at all oh you teach spirituality yeah i'm just here making sounds i'm just here sharing ideas things that are thinking this isn't uh doesn't matter i'm just here blabbing 
just making content and uh, some people find it valuable and entertaining and spiritual even great oh then why do you look like this well i want to convey the right idea across and also this way of looking changes my communication style that's why i dress this way oh but you say you're spiritually teach and you're a spiritual uh, master and spiritual leader and of course i am because <laughs> When you're doing the wrong thing, it's not hard to just not do the wrong thing. I have learned a lot of things not to do. Oh yeah, I just don't do that. You know what I don't do? Harmful physical actions. That's much more than the rest of humanity can say. I just don't do things to myself anymore. Wow, he's so spiritual. Yeah, I am. I guess I can claim that. But am I some sort of... Am I Sadhguru? That's the only thing I can compare myself really that's worthwhile? No, unfortunately not. Not yet. So Sadhguru, at that point, I saw that he's like, he's my guide now. That's exactly how I want to replicate myself. I'll, I'll, he, will, he will lead me to exactly where he is. Because a man like that can never deceive you. It's not physically possible. The laws of the universe don't work like that. It's never going to happen that he's going to deceive you in some way that's damaging or hurtful to you maybe he'll try to lie for your own benefit or advantage but that's very rare and that's kind of also silly and foolish but it's a possibility but deceiving you in this kind of ooh, i'm gonna scam you i'm gonna take advantage of him because i'm spiritual never that's never happened before in human history maybe people have uh, taken on the monk's robes thinking and taking advantage of the good name of the buddhist uh, the buddhist teachings and they took on the monks' robes to kill animals. That's a famous story in Buddhism. That uh, one day a hunter put on the monks' robes because the elephants were calm around monks. The, the elephants realized, okay, these monks are peaceful and gentle. And uh, so he put on the Buddha's robes and did some things with the elephants. Anyways, he put on the Buddha's robes the orange uh, robes and uh, walked right in front of the elephant with a bow and arrow and then you know what happened and the elephant had, didn't see it coming so it's very wrong but uh, a man like Sadhguru eradicated his impurities mental impurities so he can never deceive you like that so he's a guide to me and if we're walking on this path spiritual path or in a, in a forest and I have blindfold on which essentially I do I'm just stumbling through this life just as much as you are But I have a good guide, and he's talking to me to my, through my ear. He's a little bit farther away, and he's saying, okay, now you have to jump. But what if I fall? Well, I have complete trust in him because I've seen what he did. I've seen who he is. I've seen what, he, what he's done. So I will jump. If he says move to the left or move to the right, I'll move to the side. And so far, pretty much 100% of the time, it has worked out very well for me. So cheers and pause while I take a sip of my water. Number three, or number one. Sadhguru is a Chakrashwara. Sadhguru has a master of his seven chakras, or the five elements. It is a very nice story of some man going to a sage, a reader, during the time of Sadhguru Sri Brahma. And this lady looks into his picture, looks into her mind's eye, and she says, this is a man that has mastered the five elements. This is what Sadhguru is. He's claimed this on numerous occasions. And what does this mean? I literally have no idea. I don't know. I can only guess and envision and spiritually project what that's going to be like if I have this or what he has. Well, I have the seven energy systems in my own body. That's very easily and clearly uh, divisible by me. The tailbone, then the reproductive organ, the maintenance center of the stomach, the heart center, the throat area, the mind's eye, and then something that is above, something that goes beyond all of this. These are generally seven. 
then we don't we leave this aside because it's too far up it's too high and you need a ladder to climb this so you don't have a ladder yet you're building it you just keep it locked away you don't really touch it it's dangerous to go up without a ladder so we keep it closed we don't really move it it's dangerous why well because you can fall <laughs> or you because you can go so high that you won't find your way back that's a real possibility so you don't force these things oh i really want to go here well if you go there then you might never come back so don't do that and the first one the base it just needs to be strong it just needs to be a foundation it needs to be a floor there's really not much thing you can do you just need to seal it up you don't need to do the things that, that damage it or release your energy in any way so you just need to kind of close it down or or it's like a foundation you pour concrete now it's nice and strong so then these other five four or five you can work with the maintenance center okay i'm getting too off topic here well no let me go back to this is important and valuable the maintenance center the manipuraka chakra the one right below your belly button also not worthwhile to work on there really isn't much work to be done with this um, meaning you don't really want to touch the space too much you can touch the other parts you can touch your the energy in your genital organs you can touch the energy of your heart you can move this out you can also touch this space you can touch this space or you can move this out very easily very gently very easy to do you can also work with this and move this that's phenomenal and fantastic i love that but the root chakra you can't move around because it doesn't go anywhere where is it gonna go it's there to root you in place to root you in this body well you can uproot yourself and then place yourself and forcefully place yourself in maybe a dead body or some other thing or another person's life that's very wild and out there don't let no that's not for anyone here don't do that but if you remove you uproot the rooting you severely destabilize yourself it's like when you're uprooting a plant there's a chance a plant is not going to like that and if it's not properly planted back plant is going to wither away similarly for you so there's no moving or working with the base chakra it just doesn't go anywhere it needs to stay strong it needs to stay rooted it needs to stay balanced it needs to stay complete what have i found that's the most destabilizing destabilizing thing for this is ejaculation and orgasm it destabilizes your whole system actually this orgasming meaning ejaculation for both men and women well women don't really have the same fluids in the same way but if you do this for sure you are releasing so much of your energy you know it's like it's not even worth it it's not worth it you're releasing energy from everywhere but the most damage that happens is to your base energy just gets flown out and not great things can happen so then comes the maintenance center that also doesn't move around because it's a maintenance center it it's like a junction box in your basement you know you have the switches that connect all the wires all the wiring goes in that and it connects the electricity to the entire house well if you decide to unplug and plug it back in if you're an expert maybe you can really move it somewhere to the house but why don't do that it's not needed just relax the, ma the maintenance center doesn't need to be moved around the belly just needs to stay you need to get enough sunlight and eat enough food that's pretty much handled 80 percent of it is handled but the others you can do work with you can do lots of work with you can do lots of fancy things with and primarily the most important to me and the most fantastic and the most interesting is the throat center the throat chakra it is so blue so wild and you can perform miracles with this how do i know this well i can see the future i can foresee the future of how this is going to be not like i'm going to fortune tell but um, the possibilities that i have this holds now and if i upscale this for 5 10 15 20 years who that's going to be magical it's going to be magical for all of you to see so that's it that's why Sadhguru is so amazing and i'll give you a bonus point here Sadhguru is so amazing because his isha life shop and store sells merchandise he sells things like for example he sold me this 
$155 water bottle. Yes, it's $155. Why? Because it was the water inside was uh, from Kailash, number one. The inside of the water bottle is coated with silver, number two. And the brass plating and the copper is also an expensive thing. And also, they deserve to make a profit and they deserve to make money, just as I do. So I'm selling off and selling these beautiful spiritual beads. If you want to know what this is, you contact me for only, only $80. You can get one just like this for yourself. So the Isha Life store has many items and objects and I recommend you go and purchase them. For example, I purchased this picture of the Diana Lingo, which I need to place somewhere. And it's a very nice picture because it also reverberates and also vibrates and it creates a nice energy atmosphere in your room. That's it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.